Hello. Today I'd like to show you how you can uh, make a quilt as you go block which is great for using up leftover pieces of batting of maybe something on the back and also random width strips. So when I come to the end of a project or end of bits and pieces of fabrics that I've got I often cut the leftovers into different width strips whatever I can get out of the piece of fabric and store them accordingly so that when I want to make something fairly quickly I've got strips ready there or in this case where I want to make a quilt using strips that are at different widths they're already there for me. So what I ended up finding in my little stash was some fairly large pieces of some nice brightly coloured fabrics that are, there was enough in them to get 10 inch squares out of and really nothing else so that worked out really well so I've cut some 10 inch squares of some brightly coloured backing squares I've cut some 10 inch squares of batting. I often get lots of batting off cuts and so I've cut out some 10 inch squares of those and then I've got a whole pile of brightly coloured in this case because I'm doing some children's things some different width strips. I've got one and a half inch, two and a half inch, two inch whatever it is that you've got. Maybe even a couple of wider ones. I often use a wider one on the corners um, and I'll show you that shortly. So what I've done is I've cut my backing 10 inches square my batting 10 inches square and then I've just got some strips here and so I'm going to sew them diagonally like I did in that sample block there and I'm just going to lay my first strip on now if you want to pop a couple of pins in feel free to do so um, I'm not going to lay it right down the center it can just be to a side it doesn't really matter where you start but somewhere sort of around the middle of the, the block and I'm going to lay my next strip now you need to make sure this is long enough to cover over your points um, and I'm just going to take that to the sewing machine and sew right through that and the backing. Now this is going to show, so I've chosen a thread that's just a medium grey. It kind of goes everywhere. You can see on here it doesn't really stand out as a strong colour, um, but it kind of just blends in. Now you could use, um, this is a great use it up type quilt. You could use all different colours. You might have lots of different threads in your bobbins that need using up. Use them up for something like this or just use a continual colour throughout as I'm doing here. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I've got those raw edges lined up. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way along on there. As I said, if you want to pop a couple of pins in, please do so. If I put pins in, they get me, so I'm not going to do it. So just my quarter inch seam. Just make sure that your strips raw edges are together. And starting from the edge of your batting square, quarter inch, oops, wrong stitch, quarter inch all the way along. Now if you've got a walking foot that would be a good idea because uh, sometimes the batting wants to move around, the walking foot helps it feed from the top as well, or in my case I've got a dual feed uh, little thing that walks along there and uh, that, that does the job really well for me. So I've got to the end of my sewing row there, take it out, snip the threads off and I can snip the fabrics off. Now normally I actually snip the fabrics off before I start, but on that first row somehow it seems easier to leave them there. And then I'm just going to finger press that over. Because I've got a synthetic batting in here, I can't really iron on that and you don't want to iron it all flat anyway. So we're just finger pressing. We've got a line of sewing now showing through. It's already quilted there. And now I'm just going to join the next strip onto that and I've got a very delicious looking strip here and um, again right sides together line up those raw edges and I would probably just cut that off so that I know it's long enough but not hanging around getting in my way when I'm sewing and back to the sewing machine again so you can see this is a fairly um, easy method of sewing strips onto batting and backing all in one go now these are going to go into a quilt but you could be making the front and backs for a bag you could be making a cushion there's lots of things you could use this similar technique for and again finger press that over and then you just continue on adding all sorts of different strips whatever it is that you've got on hand so that it goes 
all the way across there. And I've got one here that's nearly done, so I can just show you what happens when I get near to the corners. And I've got a couple of wider strips here that I can show you there, because we're going to be trimming this down. As you can see, everything is kind of overlapping a little bit here. And I'm going to be trimming it down to a nine and a half inch square. So when I get somewhere nearer the corners, I could keep sewing smaller rows on, smaller strips, but I'm going to actually choose a wider strip here because it's going to get trimmed down a little bit, you're going to lose a bit. Um, it seemed to make sense to me to have it across the corner and it's just going to get trimmed into there. So I'll quickly sew the corners on here so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't need all that length there. So line up your raw edges just the same. It's still a strip, it's just a wider strip. And at the corner, it just makes it a bit easier. So you can see that's now covered our corner. So when we come to trim that, and I would do the same on the other end with one of these, but I've actually got a block with that already done on so that I can then show you how, how we're going to trim that block. So because we've been finger pressing all the way along, if it's not sitting quite as flat as you'd like it to, I would probably just, I would give it an iron, but we're not trying to really press it flat or anything. You've got to be a little bit careful when you've got the batting in there that you don't just iron it flat. But I might just hover it over so that the heat comes through. So I'm not actually, I'm barely touching the fabric, but it's just going to set those seams quite nicely for you in there. So just hovering over the top, just to set the little finger presses. So, because if you iron it flat, it'll just go flat, and then you've got a very, very, very flat quilt. Um, so now I'm going to trim that. I'll probably trim it from the, the back side because I can see my square. Um, I've actually got a nine and a half inch square ruler here, which is very handy at times like this. Um, you don't have to have one. You can use the lines on your board to help you line up and trim, but I'm going to use this square today. So that's because I've cut my batting and backing at 10 inches, this is going to sit within. So I'm just going to position that fairly evenly within because things move a little bit. You can see there's little bits of batting poking out and things. So you have, it is a good idea to leave a little bit of a margin to trim with something like this. So I'm going to trim up one side and across the other, the top. And then I'm going to turn that around and this time place my ruler along these two edges that I've just cut. So they'll already be square now. And trim up that side and along the top. So, and there's our block. So you can see that this is quite a fun way of using up bits and pieces of batting and fabrics all in one go and there's different ways of setting them and putting them together and I'll show you that another time but I just thought it was quite good you could make all the blocks go one way you could do zigzags you can do all sorts of different things even just with that one kind of block so that was just a little um, idea just to show you how you can use up some of those fabric strips and batting bits <laughs>